everyone. Thanks for tuning in to Catching Up with the Coalition. I am here with my co-host, Susie Helm. Hi. Say hello, Susie. Hi. Um, and our special guest, <laughs> the mayor of North Adams, Jen Maxey. Thanks for having me. And town administrator right. for the town of Adams, Jay Green. Okay. Thank I always you. get your title, town manager, town administrator, can never remember, so I'm glad They're I They're synonymous. That's Are fine. they? Yeah. All right. So no offense if I miss Jack of all trades. None. That's right. Chief <laughs> cook, bottle washer. Bottle washer. Awesome. There's some jobs open in town if you're looking for some extra work. Adams.com. Take a look. We're happy to, <laughs> happy to entertain any viable applications. Sweet. <laughs> Apparently, we're all going to be having an employment show today as well. Um, so cool. So Susie, mm. do you want to jump in with what we have going on? I see you brought a stack. Of I did stuff. bring stuff. Sure. You brought all the things. Yeah. Um, the neighborlies. I don't know if you can see this. I can oh, also yeah. actually. It's probably easier to see without this. Should we put that between the two hats? There we go. Yeah. The neighborlies um, are coming up in November, and we're accepting applications. We're not applications, submissions until November fourth, and it is just. It's a community recognition award that's been going on for decades. Mm -hmm. It is recognizing your friends and neighbors for the cool stuff they do in your community without really looking for recognition. Just let them know that you're noticing and that they're doing a great job. Yeah, and it's such a great program and a great night. And it, it provides great. you a good opportunity to just to say thank you to that person who maybe shovels your sidewalk or helps you with your groceries. Yeah. Or, yeah. you know, like our ambulance workers and fire departments who yeah. are always there. And it's a, it's a fun event. So even if you don't sponsor someone, it's a great event to come out and support. Yeah, it's free and open to the public. Um, November 15th, it's the Wednesday, the week before Thanksgiving, 5 to 7 yep. at the MCLA Church Street Center. Um, and unfortunately, Representative Barrett is not able to join us this year. So that was um, a bummer because I know folks like to come. But the mayor will be with us to On take photos. Calendar. Jay, you're also welcome to come and take photos with anybody who came from Adams. We try to, like, it's a lot for people to have that extra thing, but like, you're always welcome for the photo ops. In fact, I think we had somebody last year from Town Hall, Ashley Sacco was uh, one of the, yeah. one of the honorees. Or photo bombs, if you want to photo bomb the North Adams folks. I mean, whatever you feel like. Um, we wouldn't really be photo bombing. We work so well together. Yeah, absolutely. You're always welcome North, in North Adams. I started the, my municipal functions in North Adams, so North Adams is not far removed from my heart at any given and time. We're your, literally right next to each other, right? despite what I think and who maybe is some your favorite colleague in North Adams? Careful now. Wow, that's, you know, Mira, that's <laughs> talk about putting somebody on the spot. Yeah. There's a lot. I know who really liked you. My mother. Your mom. That's yeah. right. That's her. Mrs. Maxie. As long as you're in with yep. Mrs. Maxie, right? right. Uh, but yeah, it's a great time. We are, there are five categories, I think, Susie, right? So it's use taking the lead, health and wellness, health and wellness. groups and people pulling together, the neighborly, the neighborly act, the neighborly act, and I mean, family support. Family support, which is sort of a new category and I think a little bit confusing, but we added this one for folks who support families who may foster or adopt kiddos because that's all that's all a lot and it adds on to things but also just in general a lot of our families need extra help these days and so are people helping a family doing some things providing free child care so people can have date night whatever that looks like for people um we want to recognize that as well so i got one one year for holding someone's baby while they took a shower that's a very like important thing when it you is a baby yeah showering is yeah seems elusive for a little while yeah. if i remember correctly i think we both went on that one it was <laughs> but not to get off topic, but why we're talking about wellness, um, one thing that I enjoy working with the coalition about, I enjoy working with them on everything, but um, this year with the Mayor's Fitness Challenge, even though the rain killed us, but just all of our events, whether it be hiking or yoga or um, the basketball league, which was my favorite this yep, year, that was it great. really got a lot of people out of the house and out just talking to people and having fun. And I just want to make sure I say thank you to both of you and yep. Jesse Byrne. Okay. Um, and maybe next year we can run that parallel with Adams and have some competition to see how many steps we can get in, Jay. Yeah, we, we could. Can do we that. did it one year with Pittsfield. Mm -hmm. Yeah, we did. Let's do it. Yeah. yeah, I think Jesse is always willing to do that. We're always looking to expand it. And we have to have roller skating this year. Agreed. I, I'm oh. all for it. I'm there. Uh, I'm there whether house. it's being like logged as a for points or not. So <laughs> we, we've got some fairly competitive people. Um, not to throw him under the bus, but our police chief, Chief Kelly, he can be very competitive. Um, yes, some working with him sometimes. on National Night Out was something else. He was determined to have Adams have the best National Night Out. Mm -hmm. So they did have the th biggest turnout. They, well, you, they did this year have the biggest turnout. You should see Chief Bailey play basketball. Oh, I, <laughs> so bring it on, Jay. I'm, I'm pretty sure. Yeah, I'm not I sure. feel like our towns are just like. Mer. Yeah, I'm not sure there's anyone taller than Mark. <laughs> <laughs> so awesome. Um, 
I also just want to mention, because I think it's important in um, the neighborlies is not only important to us, but the neighborlies was one of Steve Green's most treasured moments for the coalition. It was something he attended every time. And I believe he was one of the people who helped create that event for us. So um, this will be a special one for us this year um, in a lot of person. ways. Yes. You know, speaking about Steve, I can remember being a very young chief administrative officer for the city. And it was very, I was always warmly welcomed when I first started with, with the city. And Steve was one of those people who came into my office and introduced himself. Um, and we just happened to share the same last name. But I can remember Steve's glasses and his baseball hat, you know, coming in, just sitting down and introducing himself. And I realized as time went on, people would say, oh, are you, are you related to Steve Green? And that was such an honor for me to, after I got to know him because I felt yeah. like, oh, that was, that was nice. Oh, you guys have the same personality. And I realized that was a really – I, I was thinking yeah, about that. Sure. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Steve I, will definitely be missed. He was um, he's was my uncle's neighbor, and what great neighbors they have been, oh. he and Sue and, and the girls, and just a genuine, caring person. And, um, There's a thought that in our conference room, we create a space to retire the flannel shirt, glasses, and MCLA baseball <laughs> hat that was consistently worn every month um, for our board meetings. You know, like a ba basketball player gets their jersey retired, <laughs> that we would retire Steve's chair and his stuff. So we'll see. It's a big seat to fill for sure. Um, on another note, because that was just the neighborlies, what else do we got? Uh, so many things. <laughs> we have, oh, well, I mean, super fun stuff. Downtown Trick or Treat is coming up again. Uh, that is going to be excited. Friday, October 27th. Hopefully the weather cooperates, 4.30 to 6 p.m. downtown. Um, Gabby should be going around and recruiting businesses. I think last year there were, with kids and parents, it was like over a thousand people. It was. Oh like, yeah, wow, what was, a great time. Yeah. yeah, and this year we're gonna block off the main street yeah. so yes. we don't have to worry about traffic, traffic and people zigging in and out of cars. And uh, which thank you to the city for doing that. Yeah. I think that'll yeah. make it a little safer. For then you. hopefully some of the businesses aren't right downtown if they want to come and be on the street with us. Yeah, we're very, we're always very excited to help any way we can. That's one of my favorite holidays. It's so. costume watching was amazing last year, and I'm super excited. There were all kinds of the rain cloud. With the rainbow, I'm trying to think of what the the spaghetti and meatballs. There was a lot of really. Cute there were some stuff. amazing costumes. Yeah. It's I, up there with the children's parade, which is coming up next Friday. I know. <laughs> I'm judging this yeah. year. I'm so excited. So I the children's asked. parade will be um, next Friday, kicking off at the First Baptist Church, I believe. Um, we're really excited yeah. about that. I love to see all the kids and all the costumes. And then on that Sunday, um, October 1st, stepping off at one o'clock, we have our annual fall foliage parade. And that's always a good time. I will be float building tonight after we leave work. Yeah, I'm not really sure. I should probably check in on where our float is at. <laughs> it might it's be floating. Carissa. <laughs> I've been tasked with, uh, I believe, driving the Grand Marshal. Oh, oh nice. nice. Awesome. In one of my classic cars. Yes. Which are very cool. So, it's a 1968 Mercury Montego. Oh, cool. Turquoise, white, and white interior. That sounds awesome. Oof, turquoise and white. Yes. It's always my dream Thunderbird. Yeah. Like a classic okay. Thunderbird with turquoise and white. That would have been the bomb. Yeah. Keeping that clean is challenging. Uh huh. <laughs> That's why you were late today. Yes. Okay. No. So for those of you who don't know, um, Jim Holmes will be yeah. our Grand Marshal this year, and we thank Mr. Holmes for trying to connect and, and promoting um, reading and literacy throughout our community. Um, I think every week he calls me. Want to read a book? Want to read a book? Want to read a book? <laughs> um, so we're ex very excited to honor him in the parade. So thank you to the parade committee for that. Yeah. It's very cool. It's going to be so much fun. And then the jury band will be there along with all of our floats and, yep. and organizations. And if we could just get some fall colors. Yeah. Just if we could just not have rain, I'll be, I'll be happy. True. Like, That's also The forecast, plus. I looked today, the forecast is partly sunny, high 70. Let's hope right. it stays that way. I know. I know. But I Don't get her hooked okay. up, Jay, because if she I gets disappointed, I have to I look can't. at her every day and she's just like sad. I have tantrums like a two-year-old when it is below 70 degrees. So. <laughs> Yeah. We literally got into my car, and I think my car was about 85 degrees, and I was like, I'm not going to turn the air on. I'm just going to let you get warm. And she's like, me. thank you. You know, with all the knowledge we have, just even at this table, we can't control the weather. Nope. No. Like, nope. Can we work on that? Work a little harder on being able to control the weather? It'd be nice. Like, we should be meteorologists. It's the only job you can be consistently wrong in. Right. So keep your job. That's what they say. <laughs> no, yeah. Pretty amazing. People are so <laughs> mad at you, though, just in case you're, you know, yeah. like, that, that doesn't change. Oh, yeah. No, it doesn't. No, I, I think we've come to that conclusion that just in, in life, you're not going to please everybody. 
it's it's hard during the winter months to try to figure out what to do with town offices, city offices, et cetera. And you listen to this data that comes in and then you decide to make a, a decision and then it turns out to be nothing but a flurry. Yeah. And it's... It, <laughs> know that the children are always with you when you call us. They are. Yes. Mm -hmm. Like, yeah. whether it snows also or not, they're... Oh, there's still some adults that way, too. I was say, so where are the staff of the coalition is we now align <laughs> with the city. So when the city closes, we're closed. Yeah. So I'm like, well, there you go. But I do think parents appreciate us making the call early instead of 6 o'clock in the morning, which is very difficult for me because most of um, my uh, experience calling school, I was on a college campus, and yeah. you never wanted to call class that early. Um, but I think parents appreciate the early call. They but, got a plan. But things can change so quickly yeah, overnight. That's true. And, you know, for, for us, of course, it's safety of the community, but it's also safety for our drivers and having them to navigate around people and cars, um, driving that big equipment. Mm -hmm. it, it, sometimes it's just easier to keep everybody home. Yeah, yeah that's fair. Totally. And in the DPW forces, in any of our communities, but particularly Northern Berkshires, we never have enough. We never have enough equipment. We never have enough staff. And that does make that job a little easier for them uh, to be able to tighten up those roads and, and get the snow back out rather than trying to make sure not only are they tired because they've been on the road for a long time, uh, but they're looking out for other people as well. So there, there is some thought to that as municipal officials when we take that into consideration. Yeah. We don't always necessarily do a great job of communicating why we're making these decisions, but we do think it through. Yeah. It's not arbitrary. Yeah, no, totally. Yeah, and you know, sometimes you have to really look at you know, what's going on in your community that day for events or, or visitors into the community. And sometimes you have to make the hard calls, but it definitely, and I speak for you, safety comes first mm -hmm. in our communities. Yep. But I think that's, it. I mean, part of the reason why we have you guys here is to talk about like what yeah. you do and the stuff like that. But I think that's a good segue to also like, it's not just weather, right? It's all decisions that our city officials are making that come with <laughs> a lot of steps and a lot of considerations yes. and a lot of people that you have to consider in each yeah. part of those and different groups of people and different ages and it's all of that stuff. And so it's appreciated. I have learned to appreciate that even more sitting in the chair um, and the leadership of the coalition of how hard those decisions are. And I only have this little bitty group of people. Mm -hmm. I don't take care of lots and lots of people um, in that same way. So um, but I can I only imagine. Weather, unfortunately, has been driving the majority of our calendar. Yeah. Um, going back to July with the big storms. You know, if there, if one good thing came out of all of that, it was the collaboration and support with all the surrounding communities. Um, I think Jay and I talked more that week than we had probably talked Absolutely. in months. <laughs> um, Clarksburg, Williamstown, even Pittsfield came up and, you know, let us borrow some sandbags. And just working with uh, MEMA and everything really just shows the great community that we have. Um, but weather has monopolized my calendar. I don't know about yours. <laughs> no, I agree. And it's the aftermath as, as well. It isn't just preparing. Like when we thought Hurricane Lee was going to come mm -hmm. in, all of a sudden we had to go back to some of those trouble spots that we knew and say, what's the possible effect with that? And we're still dealing with insurance claims. And, and we have to explain to people, you know, yes, we, under we understand this, but the amount of rain that we've received, you, for whether you believe it or not, things are definitely different when it comes to weather. Oh, and we're, 100%. we're seeing that, and we're seeing that impact. The infrastructure of North Adams and, and Adams was built far differently than the type of storms that we're getting now, and we can't, it can't keep up. Mm -hmm. And we can adjust to that, but it's millions of dollars. So it isn't just the mayor can snap her fingers and say, we need to replace that culvert. It has to be engineered, it has to be permitted, and then it has to be designed to handle the amount of storms that we get, and none of that is inexpensive. And we, we all know that there's only so many resources available to direct. And the hard part, you know, especially during the storms is, you know, um, we were, it was declared emergency, obviously, but trying to find contractors to come in. Yeah. You know, um, State Street has been the, the bane of my existence with that, that <laughs> culvert there. And um, we don't have the equipment to cut it out and fix, fix it right. So we just keep resurfacing and resurfacing. And you know we're getting closer to getting on the contractor's to-do list, but people are busy yeah. um, finding people to do the work. And then the cost of the work is incredible. Um, and that's what we're up against. And you know, I really, I'm, I'm not done with the state of Massachusetts. I'm sure you're not either. You know, with their promise that they're going to help us. Well, coming out for a photo shoot doesn't do it for me. I want to check. So, um, I think we have been very vocal about that. 
that thank you for being here for the photo op, but send the treasurer the next visit with the check. Mm -hmm. Yes. Um, but people need to understand that. I like that. that approach. Yeah, people need to understand that we haven't forgotten about you, but these weather patterns have been killing us. Mm -hmm. And you know, every time it rains, we go into high alert like we would for a snowstorm now. Um, but you know, I think we learned a lot this summer uh, about working together as a team. And we also learned where our high impact areas are and how to monitor them and prepare. And you know, I say to my residents all the time, if you see something that looks strange, call us. Just call us. Absolutely. Don't wait till you know somebody's car is floating down the street. Right. Mm -hmm. I think it's a good a good thing too. And we've talked about this in past years, even when Annie and I worked together at the coalition. Um, how important it is also to help our communities prepare so that right each household has a level of preparedness so that we're not fully dependent on our municipalities because there's going to be big, big things you guys need to work on. So if we can take care of our own little things like having extra food and water, having those kinds of things. And um, those are that's a piece of education I think people forget, like how to have your own preparedness at home, mm -hmm. be able to do that stuff, make sure you have batteries and a flashlight and mm -hmm. things like that so that big things can get taken care of mm -hmm. and we're not, you know. And really just the, I'm sorry, just the basics. Check on your neighbors. Oh yeah. You know, when I say that to people, they're like, I don't know our neighbor, my neighbors. Well, let's go over and meet them. I don't know right. them either. Let's, 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 let's go them old to, school. Yeah. Let's talk to someone. But right. sometimes it's, you gotta go back to the basics. Yes. And really that's what July 10th was. You know, everybody, I can't say enough about our community. Everybody was pitching in, supporting the highway, trying to move trees, trying to unplug culverts. And um, it was a sad sight to see, but it also was a nice sight, if that makes any sense. Northern Berkshire always comes together at uh, a variety of different times, but yeah. I think the clinics that we ran during the, the health pandemic yeah. or times like July 10th, this community is phenomenal. And mm -hmm. that's, as, not a, as a native, um, I can tell you that it's always impressed me ever in the 15 years that I've been here. It, it, in times of crisis, everybody always comes together. It doesn't matter jurisdictional line. It, none of that matters. Yeah. We all come together. Yeah. Let's hope we don't have to wait for a crisis to do it again. No. No. Because um, <laughs> no. there's that too, right? Like, I would, you know, and that's part of what we do, right, is on the other side of that is taking that. We know we have the skill set and we know we have the desire to be around our neighbors and be with people. And how do we do that? at these things like the downtown celebrations and the fall foliage, like those are the moments when it's not a crisis when we don't all have to be worried and nervous and worrying and maybe complaining a little, but also like enjoying each other's company and enjoying mm -hmm. where we live. Cause while the weather is extreme, which is, I think it is different than it used to be. It's kind of like culture, it's all or nothing now. <laughs> we right. either get nothing or we get all of it. But um, I also think we need to really just continue to operate and everything that we plan have a backup rain yes. plan. Because it's so disappointing for people when events yeah. get canceled. And yeah. I know through the Mayor's Fitness Challenge, it's like, oh, it's raining. It's raining again. But, you know, I think we get smarter as we plan. And, and I think all of us, our goal is just to get the community out and engaging. Mm -hmm. We all went into our homes during COVID and we're isolated. And, you know, now we want to just keep pulling people out. And, and it's still it's yes, happening. Yes, we do. Just yeah. Slowly but surely. Um, but speaking of good things, I would love to hear from both of you. What are some highlights, some things you got going on sure. in the city, in the town of Adams that you would love for people to hear about? They're like, you know, kind of like maybe in the background because all the bad stuff kind of gets in the news all the time. But we want to talk about like what else is good. Mm -hmm. So I don't know who wants to go first. Oh, I would mind go I ahead. First? Go ahead. It is my city. No, it is your city. <laughs> <laughs> well, by Jump population is, is Field North Adams Adams. So yeah, yeah. Makes sense. Uh, I'm kidding. Um, you know, we're very excited to be hosting Fresh Grass this weekend. Starting uh, today, the gates will open and run through Sunday evening. Um, so if anyone's looking for me, I'll be in the St. Anthony's parking lot or in Mass Mocha. <laughs> um, but we're very excited to um, welcome close to 6,000 plus guests throughout the weekend. And uh, we have some great vendors happening in Mass Mocha. And we have wayfinding signs to direct people into the downtown. Um, so we're hoping that it's going to be a great, great weekend here in North Adams. Um, on the project side, you know, I'm pleased to announce that we've awarded a contract for the YMCA roof. Oh, yay! Yes. Awesome! <laughs> that has been a hot topic and um, very upsetting. Um, it's a long overdue project um, that, you know, despite the price tag, really just needed to get underway. Mm -hmm. um, so we're hoping to have work started very soon. We're going to have a pre-construction meeting soon. 
um, and get that project going so people can get back into the pool before winter. Um, for those of you who don't know, um, we've been running a shuttle up to Bennington, Vermont, to their Y. Um, so we do have some swimmers going up regularly, um, and you know we'll continue that until the snow starts flying, which could be tomorrow. Um, <laughs> oh, no, please no, <laughs> for yeah. Susie's sake. I but we are <laughs> underway with that. Um, we're underway with some design work on the Belvedere of the North Adams Public Library. Oh, uh, big thing is um, Galley and Caridi had left us some money. Um, along with a, a airmark from the state of Massachusetts. So we hope to get that engineered and out Wonderful. to bid. Um, the marquee on the Mohawk yep. Theater is being built as we speak. We're very excited about that. Um, we hope to have that installed in lit mid to end of October. Um, and that is going to really beautify our downtown. Yeah. Um, we are continuing to work on storm water management projects. They're not so sexy. Um, streets and sidewalks, handicap accessibility. We finally got the ramp fixed at City Hall. Jay, you should come with your skateboard. Um, <laughs> it is now safe to enter and accessible. Um, last couple months, you know, last year, we've been really focused on handicap accessibility in our building. Um, and we hope to expand that by having um, an ADA coordinator named and working with our Disabilities Commission. So that's been something that we've really been working on. Um, the long uh, wanted bike path, we're moving forward with that and working with the state and tourists. Tourists has been a great partner in that. A lot of fun stuff going on it. It's City Hall. The Hoosick River Revival. Oh, the, how could I forget that? That's the best yeah. I'm here for. <laughs> yeah. Judy, Judy Grinnell, I got you. <laughs> yeah. The Hoosick River Revital, we had our kickoff with the Corps of Engineers. We're having weekly calls with them. Um, very interesting program. And, and people have to remember it's about um, water uh, safety. It's about controlling the flood control chute, but exploring opportunities to beautify. We are not taking down the flood control. This is not the 50s. We no. have advanced beyond have. what used to exist yes. as our only option. Yes, so. but many of those walls are falling. The rebar is coming through. Um, you know, everything is deemed safe, um, but we need to start fixing things so 30, 50 for years from now we're not in trouble. Um, so all, you know, a lot of projects going on, um, but most importantly, we're just really trying to be responsive to our citizens. Um, and really working to feel what the needs are, listen to what the needs are of the community, engage as we move forward. All right, Jay, you're up. I will that's a hard act to follow. Um, <laughs> that's I'm why gonna, I wanted to go first. I'm gonna, <laughs> I'm gonna start with what uh, is a digital equity study that we have going on in conjunction with mm -hmm. North Adams. Cheshire, I think Florida and Lanesboro are signed on. And if you're sitting at home and wondering about internet access and being able to work from home and we talk a lot about digital equity and we talk about broadband, but what does all that mean? Mm -hmm. How can we translate that, distill that down into actionable items? And that's mm -hmm. what this grant's for. We do some of our best work regionally. So keep an eye out uh, for that on a variety of different calendars. I think I want to say late October, we have the first listening session in Adams for Northern Berkshire. I think there'll be one in Lanesboro and I think another one maybe up here in North Adams. And I think there might be two up here. But keep an eye open for that, um, and that's important for people to give their feedback in terms of what they would like to see for, for increased broadband. It's hard to speak to the legislative delegation in a vacuum and not be able to give them something to yep. ask for. Uh, we all know how important it is to ask for the state uh, for, for things. You have to be very sharp with it. So we're working on that. Adams Theater is very exciting. Yes, um, very exciting. That is, it's such a great community event to, to see all that. Uh, Ina Moore has done a great job with that project. Mayor's been there. I've seen a lot of North Adams folks there. Um, around the 8th of October, Columbus Day weekend, I believe, is our Ramble Fest. And there's some great events happening at the Adams Theater. She's bringing in a circus. I saw that. Yeah. Inside. I found that out today, and I thought, oh, that's going to be interesting. Yeah, so I Carissa's going to be there. She's you know, I'm sure it's she is. $20 for a nice night out. And they're local know. people. They're they from are. Florida. Yes. Yeah, local people. Yes. So um, that's been exciting to, to watch. Uh, it's been exciting to watch a couple of local small businesses begin to begin to pop, you know, here and there. Economic development, small business development is very hard in the Berkshires, harder in Northern Berkshire. Mm -hmm. So it's nice to see that. Greylock Glen is going really well. Great. Um, <laughs> Donna Season, our retired community development director, who's still on board with us as our project manager. Uh, she's doing a great job with that. Eamon Coughlin in our community development department with supporting. The building will probably be ready for occupancy sometime spring. Nice. 
of next year. Wow. We'll obviously be in there before the construction will be done, but we need time to get in there and get it set up. We've been doing a lot of fun stuff, picking out furniture. Uh, in fact, I was up there today. The kitchen equipment is there. We received one response to the educational center provider. That was Mass Audubon. So oh, we're cool. due to review that as part of the RFP uh, submittal review process. We'll be putting out a request for proposals for restaurant operators probably sometime in October. So if any of you folks are sitting at home and you're interested in operating the restaurant in North Adams, uh, excuse me, yeah, right. <laughs> restaurant at Greylock Glen Outdoor Center, please uh, take a look at that when it comes out. I do have a space in North Adams. We're looking for someone to the put airport. a re re absolutely restaurant in That's there. another Too beautiful spot. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. Yeah, it, it, we have these great opportunities. Reach out to us. Um, Franchise, you can be in yes. both places. Yes. <laughs> so that project is going well. Campground is still on path. That is just a very complicated project uh, in terms of the legalities. We're going back and forth, you know, with the lease. There's nothing wrong with it. Just it takes a while. As we said earlier when we started, when you involve yourself with the municipality, it takes time. It takes as much time. as the mayor and I would just love to take a hot knife and right. cut right through all the red tape, it process. Yes, it's process. process. Yeah. yeah. So a lot of exciting things. Uh, a lot of synergy between our communities, as there, there's always been. Um, we have a lot to be happy about. It's hard to cut through some of that negativity that we see. But. Yeah, I do. Um, you know, Judy actually and I were talking and I think as you mentioned the feedback process on the broadband stuff and the internet and some of the HRR project and there's a lot of opportunities for community members to get out and give feedback Absolutely. and I think our community has lost the sense of how important that really is because when our community speaks up, the state actually listens. Mm -hmm. But we have to speak up in order to get them to listen. So the more people who show up, the more people who say something, the more people who talk, mm -hmm. say what you want, the more apt we are to get our legislators what they need to go fight for the dollars that need to come out here. So it yes. really is on the community. It's not just on our legislators and our municipal leaders. It's actually on us to help you get the money. Mm -hmm. um, and we don't, I, we've, I think over time kind of lost that, but I think it's time to like for us to start re-engaging in that process. And we are very fortunate that we have the relationships that we do with Representative Barrett, Senator Mark, and even mm -hmm. the governor's office, mm -hmm. and even with Congressman Neal and Senator Warren. Mm -hmm. um, I, I know Jay has, and I certainly have in the last two years, worked really hard to build that network, and they've been very responsive to us. Again, we want to see the dollars. <laughs> um, right, we'd love it to translate they, to something. But they, think, you know, they take our calls. Yep, they, 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 they know where we are, and they're not forgetting about us completely. Um, no, they haven't forgotten <laughs> about us. I'm, I'm fairly certain that's not a thing. <laughs> wow, we're there. It goes by fast. I know, it goes by, and there was, so, there was so much. But thank you guys both for coming and joining us, especially I know we had wanted to get you on earlier, and we couldn't coordinate, and so for you guys to make time to come later. It, yeah, it worked out well. We wanted to come together. We, we did. I see that. Right. It, was like a, right. it was like a pair. Right. Um, we could do a regular show. I will tell you, it is my understanding, though, for Mayor Maxi, you have been challenged yeah. next year for the live show for the trophy trivia. that goes with the trivia. Um, Susie is the winner. Actually, Jay, I don't see why we don't just all celebrate all right. Day. So yeah. Susie was the winner, and so she is challenging municipal leaders to come and battle her for the trivia trophy next year. Wow. Game on. Game I just on. had a good year. Yes. down right there. Yeah. So it's on. a cool, I mean, you want this trophy. It's a small banana. <laughs> It's a small banana, like about this small big. Small banana. Positive. But on that note, we need to close yeah. out. So thank you guys for coming. Thank you for watching. Thanks for having us. Yeah. Thank you. Yay.